Hey everybody. Today I'm going to talk about the delays on conditions in Reactor, and we're going to look at two specific use cases uh, that will hopefully illuminate for you how the delays work and what they can be used for. Uh, so let's jump right into that. So you can see here I have a simple uh, Reactor sensor set up with just one device state test that looks at a door sensor and sees if its tripped state is equal to one, which would be if the, the security sensor is open, if the door is open. And you can see I can open the door here and the condition will go true. And then I can close the door and the condition will go false. So let's look at our first use case. Our first use case uh, for the delays uh, is going to be uh, sending a notification or taking some action if the door is left open for too long. Let's say this door sensor is on our garage door and if the garage door is left open for too long a period of time, uh, we want to send a notification or, you know, text to speech something out, who knows what. So in order to do that, uh, basically what we're looking at here is I'm going to go in the conditions for editing and we can see our condition is set up in the usual way. And I'm going to open up the condition options here, which you've seen me do before in other videos. Um, if you are just jumping straight to this video and you've never seen this before, then this is the little icon you use to open up the condition options pane. And then you have access to all these options for this condition that would normally not be visible. Um, and the specific delay we're interested in is this one right here, condition is sustained for. So recall the scenario that we're trying to set up here is when the door has been left open for a certain period of time. In other words, when the door sensor being tripped is sustained for a certain period of time. Then that's when we want this condition to go true and our action to happen. Now, we would normally set our condition here, our delay for some period of time that makes sense for how long we wanna you know, delay the, the message about the door. 30 minutes, for example, 1800 seconds would not be unusual, but we don't wanna wait that long here in the video. So I'm just gonna set it for 15, seconds so we now have a sustained for delay of 15 seconds and you can see now that i have a one of these options set my little option indicator here has gone to yellow it's highlighted yellow so when i look at these conditions and i don't have the options open it's still yellow and i can see that one of the conditions is set so that's your clue that a condition is set if you, if you didn't already know that okay so let's save this and now i'm going to go over to my door and i'm going to open my door and we can see that my door is now transitioned to open. The trip state is equal to one. And it's counting off here. It's counting off how long that transition has happened. And when the transition is finally satisfied, it will set the condition true. Now, there was a little delay here after the count because it takes a moment for the UI to communicate uh, the updated status and everything. So there's a delay. The, Vera's UI isn't completely up to date with everything that's going on up to the up to the instant. There's usually a delay of at least two seconds and sometimes plus a little bit more. So that's what that delay was about. But if you measure it based on the timing, then you will see that the door opened, the door tripped at 12.29 and 27 seconds and our group here has been true since 12.29 and 42 seconds. Lo and behold, there is exactly 15 seconds in between those two times, okay? So we can confirm that our 15 second timing actually happened, even though there was this pregnant pause on the UI before the UI updated to show us the new state. That's something I can't work around, unfortunately. It's just the way Vera's UI is. That's the delay going true. So if I now if I close the door, as soon as I close the door, the condition goes back to false. Now what happens if I open and close the door rapidly? I'm going to open the door, and we'll see that our timer is running now again. But now if I close the door, and just sit for a second, the condition never went true. Right? Even though the door got opened, the condition never went true. Again, I'm going to open the door again. Now I'm going to close the door again. The condition never went true. And it never went true because we didn't sustain the condition for the 15 seconds that we specified. If the condition is sustained for the 15 seconds, that's when it will go true. And I'm going to do that right now again. 
just one last time. So it's counting up. We're at 12. So refresh happens here, takes a second, and boom. And again, so our condition, our door got closed at 1231.40. Our group went true at 1231.55, 15 seconds later. That's exactly what we expect. All right, so that's how we handle the scenario of send me a notification or take some action when the door is left open too long, when you need to delay the action and the action and the condition has to be met throughout the entire delay period, you use the sustained for delay. All right, so let's look now at a different example. Um, let's say that I have a door that I want to get a notification or take some action immediately when the door opens, um, but then later on I want to take some counter action when the door closes. But here's the problem. I don't want to react to every single opening and closing of the door that happens over a short period of time. So uh, in the time that the door is active, if you will, between the time when it's first opened and the time that it's finally closed, um, I don't want continuous notices or continuous activity. I just want that first time it opens and that last time it finally closes. Well, the way we can do that is by using the delay reset option. And what the delay reset option does is it defers the transition to false of the condition until the underlying test that we're doing, whether the door is open or closed, until that has been false continuously for a period of time. It's the opposite of the sustained for delay. The sustained for delay delays the transition to true when the condition has been sustained for that amount of time, that is when the underlying test has been met for the delay period. This is the opposite. We're delaying the transition to false until the condition has not been met for a certain period. So let, let me set up an example of that. And that, let me talk about a scenario too. I'm going to take off my sustained for delay on this condition. And I'm going to put my 15 seconds on my delay reset here. And an example I have in my own house of how I would use this is I have a door between the kitchen and a deck outside where I have my barbecue. So when we are um, barbecuing, I will go through that door 10 or 15 times easily, bringing stuff out to the barbecue, bringing stuff in, going out to turn the meat, check the meat, whatever it is. I'll be constantly moving back and forth through that door. And if some action was happening, if I was turning on a light or turning off a light or sending a notification or what have you, every single time that door opened and closed, it would just be kind of nuts. So if I did it the first time when the door opens and then the last time when the door finally closes, then it's a little bit more quiet, makes a little bit more sense, and I'm not getting spammed by the notification the entire time in between. So now I've set the door sensor tripped equals one, the door's open, delay reset for 15 seconds. And again, this means that when the door closes, when tripped goes to zero, this will not be true anymore. So this will be false as it is now. Then there will be a 15 second pause before the condition itself goes false. And during that 15 seconds, the door has to stay closed the whole time. Let's try it. As soon as I open the door, the condition goes true. And now I'm going to close the door. And now when I close the door, you can see that it's showing me the reset delay and it's counting down the reset delay. And then finally, it's acting on the door and it's going to clear this condition. And again, we can see that even though the UI didn't show me the timing exactly the way everything happened, we can see that the door did close at 33 seconds after the minute, and the group reset at 48 seconds after the minute, 15 seconds in between them. So our timing was honored. Again, it's just the UI isn't fast enough to keep up with some of these transitions. So now, so that's great. Let's look what happens when we open and close the door rapidly in this case. So I'm going to open the door. And now I'm quickly going to close the door. And you can see our delay start counting off, but we're still, the condition is still true. And I'm going to open the door again. And now the delay has gone away because the door isn't closed. And I'm going to close the door again. And I'm going to open the door again and notice how I'm just keeping, I'm just continuously opening and closing this door 
but the condition is staying true. All right, so all of that activity passing through the door, open, closed, open, closed, is being ignored at this point by the condition. And it's not until I leave it alone, which I'm going to do now, it's not until I leave it alone that it runs out the reset period. And finally, we'll clear the condition and allow the condition to go false, which lets the group go false. Right there. And just that easy. So that's a wrap for those examples. Again, to recap, you use the sustained for delay on the front end of the transition, the transition going to true. You delay the true transition by the amount of the sustained for delay, and the condition has to be met the whole time. And the delay reset delays the back end, delays the, um, the condition going from true to false, and the, the condition no longer being met has to be sustained for a particular period of time, whatever you specify. Uh, before the condition itself will go to false. All right, so that does it for another video. As usual, if this video is helpful to you, uh, hit the like button down there if you want to know when new videos come out. Subscribe. If you want to get notifications, hit the bell. And if you have any questions for me, comments about this video, or what have you, I would appreciate hearing from you at community.getvira.com. You'll find me there. My name is Patrick, but my handle on the community is rigpapa, R-I-G-P-A-P-A. -P -A. Thanks again for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.